All right, welcome to the third lesson of our tutorial series on how to create the game Among Us in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be going over how to create and program the idle and walk animations for our player. So let's get to it. All right, so to create the basic animation for our player object, we'll first need to open up our player prefab. To open it, we can double click on it in the project window. We then need to open the animation window. So we'll go to window, animation, animation. Now, if you don't currently have any animations on your player object, you'll see this prompt that says to begin animating and then the name of the object, create an animator and an animation clip. So we'll click the create button, which will bring up our file system. I've then added a new folder called animations and for this first animation we'll call it idle. To create the timeline for the idle animation we need to add two properties which are the sprite properties for the two sprite renderer components on this object. To add the first sprite property we'll click the add property button. You'll then need to expand the player game object then the sprite render component and down at the bottom of this list you should see the sprite option and you'll just click the plus sign for that property. To add the second Second sprite property, we'll click the add property button, expand the player game object and the part game object, and then the sprite render component, and scroll down to the bottom of this list and add that property. Now for this animation, we just have a keyframe for both properties at the beginning and at the end or one second mark. And that's everything that we need for the idle animation. So we'll then create the run animation. To do this, we'll click on the animation dropdown menu and you'll click on create new clip, which will bring up your file system and you'll wanna make sure that you're within your animation folder and you can just call this animation run. And for this timeline, I've added in a couple more keyframes and I've replaced the sprites at certain keyframes with the different running sprites from our sprite sheets. And so here at frame zero, I have the sprite where the left leg is forward. And when you replace the body sprite, you'll also want to replace the sprite for the visor to be the corresponding element as the sprites should all be in order. At frame 12, I just have the standing sprites. At frame 14, I have where the right leg is forward. And at frame 26 and 27 I have the standing sprite again. Now this animation is nowhere near where it should be for production. I just created it super quick with what I had. Typically for 2D animations you would want to have a new sprite for every frame where needed. So instead I just have a super snappy animation which will work for now. Now once we have these animations created we need to set up our animator. To do this we'll need to open up the animator window. So we'll go to window animations and select animator. Now inside this window you should see the two animation states and if you created the idle animation first it should appear orange which means it's the default animation. If it's not the default or starting animation you can just right click on it and then select set as layer default state. Now the first thing that we'll do inside this window is create a new parameter. So make sure that you go over to the parameters tab. We'll then click the plus sign and select a float parameter. I've then named my parameter speed. Once you have your parameter created, we then need to create the transitions between our different animation states. To do this, we'll right click on our idle animation and select make transition. You'll then click on the run animation. We'll then click on the run animation, select make transition, and click on the idle animation. This will create these two white arrows that I already have. We can then select the transition from idle to run, and in the inspector, we want to disable has exit time. This will make it so that we won't transition when the idle animation finishes playing. We then want to set the transition duration to zero. Now you'll probably be getting a warning down at the bottom next to conditions, which will say something like this transition requires one condition in order to work. And so we'll add a condition by clicking this plus sign. We'll make sure that the parameter is set to speed and we want it to be greater than we'll say 0.1. This makes it so that if our speed parameter becomes greater than 0.1, our animator will automatically transition from playing the idle animation to the run animation. And now all we need to do is set up the other transition. So we'll select the transition from run to idle and we'll do the same steps that we did for the other transition. So we'll disable the has exit time and set the transition duration to zero. We'll then add a condition, which will be the speed parameter, but we'll change it from greater than to less than and 0.1. Now if we go back to our player prefab and select it, you should notice that we now have a new component on this game object 
which is an animator component. This component was automatically added to this object when we created our first animation. And so now all we have to do is add some code to our player controller script that will modify that speed parameter. So I'll open up our player controller script. Now first off, you might notice that I have some of my code highlighted in green. This is the code that we've already covered in our previous videos. And I've highlighted the code that we've already covered because I'll be using my mouse to select the code that I'm currently talking about as I go through it. So now that I've explained that, let's program our animator. The first thing that we need to do is create a variable to hold our animator component. So here I have a new variable of type animator called myAnim. We then need to initialize this variable and we'll do that within the start function. So here at the bottom of the start function I have myAnim equals git component and we're looking for an animator. Then all we have to do is update the speed parameter. And so in the update function here at the bottom I have myAnim dot set float and we're using set float because our speed parameter is of type float and this function requires two parameters the first is the name of our parameter and so I have the string speed and the second parameter is the value that we want to set it to and so I'm using movement input dot magnitude magnitude takes the x and y components of our vector 2 and combines it into one value, and that value is always positive. And that's how we can check for if our parameter is greater than 0.1 in order to transition to the run animation. But once we have all of this, we can save our script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we can just test out our project. And our astronaut is playing the idle animation, which is just the standing position. But if I press WASD, our player starts moving around and the run animation is playing. Then when I stop, our player returns to the idle animation. All right, that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson on how to add basic animations to our player. In the next lesson, we'll be going over the color change mechanic for our player's avatar. Now, if you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all the latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.